What's up guys, Ame here with another video. Professions in TBC play a pivotal part in the progression of your character, whether it be through powerful gear or gathering materials to craft gear or make money. Tailoring stands at the forefront of the professions in TBC that offer powerful upgrades for your character for both healers and casters alike. But how good is it really? Do you absolutely need to be a tailor if you're a caster or a healer? Or can you afford to be a jewel crafter and engineer if that's what you want to do? In this one, we'll take a look at how good the tailoring gear is and compare it to other gear options, as well as look at all the other things you can do with tailoring that make it a great profession. Most importantly, we'll also address how long each class will use their crafted gear from tailoring until they replace it and hopefully help you answer the question, should I be a tailor in TBC? Let's get into it. One quick housekeeping thing before we get into the video. This video required a ton of editing and I didn't realize till the very, very end that all the tooltips with yellow sockets are wrong and say meta socket instead of yellow socket like this one. Only helms have meta sockets and are denoted by a grayish socket that looks like this, not a yellow one. So just keep that in mind while you watch the video. Before we get into the nitty gritty of how long each set will last each class, let's look at some of the secondary benefits of tailoring outside of crafted gear. The biggest thing outside of the gear is the crafted spell threads. These spell threads can be used to enchant your pants to either increase spell damage or increase healing. These patterns can be picked up through either Aldor vendors or Scryer vendors, with the healing ones coming from the Aldor and the spell damage ones coming from the Scryer. These threads are not only good for the tailor, but are a great money maker as people will be buying these up frequently throughout the Burning Crusade. Come TBC, tailors do their best engineer impressions with the addition of Netherweave nets. These nets just cost some netherweave cloth to make and can be used to lock an enemy in place for three seconds. While these can't be used in arenas, they're actually pretty useful out in the open world, whether you need to create some space from a mob or lock down a pesky rogue trying to gank you. Definitely not a make or break for choosing tailoring, but just an interesting little addition in TBC. There are three different specializations of tailoring in TBC, moon cloth tailoring, shadow weave tailoring, and spellfire tailoring. Once you pick what specialization you would like to be, each time you craft the cloth associated with your specialization, it will create two pieces of cloth rather than one. Each cloth has an interesting cooldown of 92 hours, so three days and 20 hours. So you will be time gated in crafting these tailoring pieces unless you have alts with tailoring or buy cooldowns from other players. Now, aside from crafting this gear for yourself, selling these cooldowns early in phase one could make you a lot of gold and could be a reason for you to go tailoring as well. You also need to be in a specific place to craft each of these cloths. For spell cloth, you have to be anywhere in Netherstorm. For primal moon cloth, just like its classic counterpart, you need to be in a moon well to make it. And then for shadow cloth, you have to go down to the altar of shadows in Shadowmoon Valley. So that's how you get the cloth. Now let's look at what the cloth gives you. The frozen shadow weave set gives huge amounts of shadow and frost damage. So it's obviously geared toward the warlocks, shadow priests, and frost mages. And then you have the Spellfire set, which increases fire and arcane spells. So fire mages, arcane mages, and sometimes even warlocks who want to run fire destro. The offset for all caster classes is the spell strike hood and pants, giving huge amounts of spell power, crit, hit, gem slots, all the good stuff, with the crown jewel being the set bonus here. On every spell that lands on an enemy target, there's a chance that your spell power will increase by a very substantial 92. On the healing side of things, we have the Primal Moon Cloth set, a healer's glass cannon equivalent that sacrifices base stats for massive amounts of bonus healing. Pair this with a great set bonus of 5% of your mana regeneration to continue wall casting, and you've got yourself a solid healing set. The offset for healers is the White Man set, another set packing tons of plus healing with another great set bonus, increasing healing then by up to 10% of your total intellect. One of the biggest downfalls of the Spell Strike and White Men set are that neither of the Helms have a meta gem socket. And this is actually a really big deal for some classes that we'll go over later. Now, all of this gear is very powerful. And you know what they say, with great power comes great cost. Yes, this gear is insanely good, but it's also crazy expensive to make, which makes a lot of prospective tailors wonder, is it worth it? If I'm just going to replace it, should I spend the time and money elsewhere or should I craft this gear? And that's the golden question. When will you replace this gear? Well, let's take a quick look at how long each of these sets will last everyone that uses it in TBC. I'll also give alternative gearing options to every one of these sets for those of you that decide that tailoring is just not for you and need to get your Priebus elsewhere. 
Me personally, I'll be playing a Shadow Priest in TBC, so let's start with them. I'll just cut right to the chase with Frozen Shadow Weave. This set is amazing, hands down fantastic in every aspect. The reason it's so good is because of how much spell power it packs. As a Shadow Priest, spell power is your drug. Put an IV of spell power straight into your main vein because it's all you want and you can't get enough of it. You only need 6% spell hit from gear, so you don't need to stack hit, and Critical Strike doesn't scale well at all with Shadow Priest due to their damage over time spells. So spell power is your number one priority. Because of this, pieces like the boots, for example, these boots are literally the second best boots in the whole entire game for Shadow Priest. Yes, you heard that right. The only boots better than these are the Treads of Absolution. Those are the tier six boots that drop off of Felmist and Sunwell Plateau. The chest and shoulders as well can last you until you get tier six in Black Temple. For the offset, we have Spell Strike in the Helm and Pant Slot. And again, these are really good, but won't last you quite as long. You can realistically replace Spell Strike with items like the tier five Helm off of Lady Vosh in SSC. And even the Trial Fire Trousers that drop in Karazhan are great once you break the set. But this set can easily get you all the way through T5 as well until you start getting upgrades in T6 rating content. Overall, the tailoring gear is great for Shadow Priests, and all these pieces can take you all the way into Black Temple and Mount Hyjal rating in Phase 3. I'll personally be using it, but if you don't want to use it, your best Priebus options will be the Dungeon 3 Oblivion set in the Helm slot and the Shoulder slot. For the chest, you can use the Robe of Oblivion as well from that Dungeon 3 set, or the Akanai Anchorite's Robe from the quest, everything will be alright if you need that extra hit. The Shatrath Jumpers are fantastic boots if you aren't going the tailoring route, and are easy to pick up with the quest into the heart of the Labyrinth in Shadow Labs. Lastly for the legs, you can go with Breaches of the Occultist in Heroic Black Morass, or the Kieran Tors Master's Trousers in Heroic Shadow Labs. For our Shadow Brethren, the Warlocks, it's pretty much the same. This gear is hands down good, but not for quite as long. The boots are once again the stars here, lasting you all the way up to the Slippers of the Sea Collar in Black Temple. The shoulders and chest, however, can be replaced in Tier 5 with items like Vestments of the Sea Witch off of Lady Vosh and Illidari Shoulder Pads off of Tidewalker, as well as other options. Now, Spell Strike is an interesting one. The Chaotic Skyfire Diamond is a fantastic metagem for pretty much every caster, especially for Warlocks. We were unsure on if this gem was going to be in the game at launch, but it was in the beta. It could still be changed, but that's a good sign that it will be in the game. Knowing this, Spell Strike could arguably be replaced as early as T4, with how good the T4 set bonuses is for Warlocks added onto the fact that they would get access to their meta gem as well. If not in the game, Spell Strike can last a Warlock all the way into T6, and even if you do use the T4 helm with the meta gem, the pants are still amazing all the way into T6 as well. So overall, great gear that's viable all the way into Black Temple, with the Spell Strike Hood potentially getting replaced by that T4 Helm for the 2 set bonus and the use of the meta gem. So it's up to you if you want to craft it or go the Tier 4 route. Now if you don't want to shell out your hard earned cash for this set, the Priebus is the same as Priebus for Shadow Priest. The Oblivion set is once again a great pickup in the Helm and Shoulder slot. For the chest, you'll want to pick up the Akanai Anchorite's Robe from the quest Everything Will Be Alright, and the Shatrath Jumpers again from Into the Heart of the Labyrinth for the boots. Lastly, Breaches of the Occultist and Heroic Black Morass will be your best bets for pants outside of Spell Strike. Moving on to the Spellfire set and away from the Frozen Shadow Weave, we've got the Mages. Now this is an interesting set. Some will argue that some pieces will last you all the way into Black Temple and Mount Hyjal or even longer, with some people in the Mage community saying it's not even worth it to craft. There's a lot of theory crafty that goes behind this one depending on where you put your hit, how much you need, intellect values, all that stuff. But I'm going to try for a basic, how long will I keep this if I craft it? So here's a good idea. For the chest piece, we've got a solid upgrade over Spellfire with the Vestments of the Sea Witch that drop off of Lady Vosh. The gloves, these can essentially last you all the way to Sunfire Hand Wraps. These are another crafted tailoring piece that you don't get until Sunwell Plateau. Or they could be replaced with Gloves of the Tempest off of Asgalore in Mount Hyjal if you need the hit. And then the belt can be replaced by Belt of Blasting in Phase 2, another bind on equipped tailor craft, or last you all the way to Phase 5 with the Tier 6 belt off of Brutalis. That's a lot of info. So to tone it down, you could replace these pieces as early as Phase 2, with the gloves lasting longer, but could be replaced by Phase 3 at the earliest if you need the hit. Spell Strike is another interesting one, with the quick and dirty way to go over it is that it's not as good for Arcane, and it's really good for Fire. 
The reasoning behind it not being as good for Arcane is a mix between it not having a lot of the intellect which Arcane Mages crave, and the big one being the lack of a metagem, where you want to put that juicy chaotic Skyfire Diamond. For Fire, Spell Strike is great. The helm getting replaced at the earliest with Cowl of Tears Fall, the tier 5 helm off of Lady Vosh, and the pants not being replaced until phase 3 with pants like Leggings of Devastation in Black Temple. Most mages will be running Arcane, so the Spell Strike does seem to lose its luster for you Arcane mages, but if you're one that wants to say Fire, Spell Strike is definitely worth a pickup. If Tailoring just isn't for you, Encanter's Cal in Mechanar or Hood of Oblivion in Architraz are both solid helm options for your Priebus. Again, the Akanai Anchorite's Robe is an easy pickup from the quest Everything Will Be Alright to take care of that chest slot. Gloves of the Dead Watcher can be picked up in Heroic Akanai Crypts or Gloves of Oblivion in Normal Sethic Halls for your gloves. For the belt, we've got Belt of Depravity and this drops in Heroic Architraz. You could also craft the Girdle of Ruination, a tailoring BOE, but if you're going this other Priebus route, I figured you probably wouldn't want to do that since you're not doing the other tailoring pieces. And then lastly for the pants, Kirin Tor Master's Trousers in Heroic Shadow Labs are a great choice for the legs. All right, now for our lightning throwers. Is the Spell Strike set worth it? This is the only class where I will give my full blown opinion on if you should go tailoring or not because my main focus is to give you guys the information and have you decide for yourself if it's worth it. But this is a hard pass for me. Well, kind of. Going tailoring to get the set bonus is a hard pass for me. The legs are really good and will last you until Black Temple with the Leggings of Devastation, but for the helm, the T4 helm, the Cyclone Face Guard, it's very arguably better than the Spell Strike Hood. And this is because of the meta gem socket that the Spell Strike Hood lacks. That Chaotic Skyfire Diamond is huge for Elemental Shamans. Critical Strike is their bread and butter and they stack it hard. So an easy T4 Helm pickup with the Meta Gem slapped in there, over crafting an expensive Tailoring Helm is 100% the way to go in my opinion. Again, that's my opinion which I try to steer away from and let you guys decide on your own, but I feel pretty strongly that crafting the hood is not worth it. The pants however, find yourself a tailor and get those crafted, they'll last you a very long time. If you don't want to go for either of these, Encanter's Cal and Mechanar is a great Priebus Helm option, and for the pants, there's Stormsong Kill in Heroic Underbog. Alright Boomkins, let's be honest, just wear whatever you want. You're just there to buff the Warlocks and put debuffs up on the bosses. Nah, let's look at Spell Strike for you crit chickens, I'm just kidding. This set is incredibly good for Boomkins pretty much until you get your 4 piece tier 5, with the T5 Helm replacing it and the pants being used until T6 pants. So the set is great but just up to you if you want to drop the money on it. If you don't want to go for it, Encanter's Cal and Mechanar will be your Priebus Helm, with Kirin Tor Master's Trouser off of Murmur and Heroic Shadow Labs in the pants slot. Alright, that wraps it up for the casters, so let's move on to the healers. Before going into this one, there's actually a lot of debate on this set that I want to go over really fast, more than I thought there would be. This set is a glass cannon build, there's no doubt about that, and a lot of times in healing builds, stats like Stamina are given little to no thought as a useful stat. But a majority of people in the community are saying how they don't want to go Primal Mooncloth to have a little bit more survivability in the form of armor if you can wear something better than cloth, or just pure Stamina. I won't be taking that into account when we go over how long these sets last for each class, but I wanted to make this known to you so that you can make an informed decision on if you want to crap this set or not based on what you value pure raw healing output or a little bit more survivability. That being said, let's look at the priest first. The Primal Mooncloth belt is far and away the best piece of Primal Mooncloth that you can get. This belt is insane and is pretty equivalent to the belt of the Long Road, which is a tailoring bind on equip recipe that drops in phase 2, compared to the bind on pickup nature of Primal Mooncloth belt. The chest won't be replaced until late tier 5 content with vestments of the avatar off of Kael'thas. And once you break the set with that chest piece, you could even switch the shoulders out for the Light Mantle of the Incarnate off of Gruul. The White Man scenario is a little different. On top of it being very, very expensive to make, you can arguably get very similar output with items in Tier 4 content like the Tier 4 Helm and even the Pontiflex Kilt in Heroic Steam Vaults. The set bonus is super valuable, don't get me wrong, but this set can realistically be replaced very early. If you choose to not go with tailoring at all, some previous options would be the Hallowed Crown in the Helm slot from Architraz, the Hallowed Palders from Shadow Labs for the shoulders, the Hallowed Garments in Shadow Labs as well for the chest, the Court of Belief in Heroic Slave Pants for the belt, and lastly, the Pontifex Kilt in Heroic Steam Vaults, rounding it all out for the leg slot. 
For Holy Paladins, I said earlier that I'd only give my opinion on the Elemental Shaman part, but I'm going to do it again, and this one could ruffle some feathers, but I think it's a waste of time going tailoring. The Jessicar set, the T4 set, not only flexes better stats with more intellect and spell crit, but will replace Primal Mooncloth anyway in Phase 1 in my opinion. The belt is good, the Primal Mooncloth belt, it's a great belt, but your throughput will be more than enough with other belts you can pick up in Karazhan like Girdle of Truth off of Nether Spite or Court of Nature's Sustenance off of Terrastrin Illhoof. The White Man set does scale very well with Holy Paladin since they do stack intellect, but overall with the amount of solid plate healing gear with T4, it will not only give you increased survivability, but your healing will be more than sufficient. Again, if you want to go glass cannon with large amounts of bonus healing, tailoring will be for you. But the bonus intellect and crit from these other pieces paired with survivability make tailoring seem not worth the money in my eyes if I were a holy paladin. If you're not going to craft any of the tailoring pieces, you'll want to pick up a lot of the dungeon 3 set for your Priebus. For the helm, you'll want to pick up the hallowed crown and that drops in Architraz. For the shoulders, you'll pick up another piece from the set, the hallowed palders that drop in Shadow Labs and then the chest piece from that same set that drops in Shadow Labs as well. Court of Sanctification will take care of the belt slot, and it drops in Heroic Old Hills Broad Foothills, and then Pontifex Kill are some great leggings that drop in Heroic Steam Vault. Resto Druids, the Tree Huggers themselves, incredibly strong in TBC and even stronger with this set. Primal Mooncloth is full pre-raid bis of course, with the first piece being replaced by the T4 shoulders that drop off of High King Malgar in Gruul's Lair, so you're going to break the set as early as T4. Belt of the Long Road can replace Primal Mooncloth, which is again a dropped tailoring pattern in Tier 5 that crafts this bind on equip belt so you don't need to be tailoring to equip it. And then the chest is the big one for Druids, not being replaced until you get your Tier 6 chest off of Illidan himself, so a long time down the road into Phase 3. So two fairly early replacements with that chest lasting a very long time. And this puts Druids in an interesting position. Do you want to go tailoring just so that you can keep the chest for a long time and potentially drop the set as early as T4? That's going to be up to you. If the chest piece being used for a long time isn't enough to sell you, you'll want to pick up the Hallowed Palders from Shadow Labs for your shoulders, the Rainments of Nature's Breath in Heroic Ramps for the chest, and Court of Sanctification in Heroic Old Hills Broad Foothills for the belt. The White Men set is very good for Druids as well, but T4 Helm and Pantaloons of Repentance off of Nether Spite and Karazhan can keep up with the set in my opinion, so it might not be worth it as much to dump the money into that set if you can get similar effectiveness out of gear that drops in Karazhan. If you choose to not go with White Men, the Scintillating Headdress of Second Sight and Heroic Akani Crypts or the Watcher's Cowl from Scenarian Expedition Revered will be your go-to choices for Helm, and again, the Pontifex kill and Heroic Steam Vaults for those legs. Last but not least, the Chain Healers themselves will see a ton of you guys in TBC Resto Shamans. To put it bluntly, this set is about equivalent to Tier 5. The chest is on par with the Tier 5 chest off of Kael'thas, the T5 shoulders are better than the shoulders, and again, the belt is just really good, with the only equivalent belt being Girdle of the Fallen Star, which drops in Tempest Keep. So overall, Primal Mooncloth will last you into tier 5 rating and will ideally be replaced before you go into Black Temple and Mount Hyjal. The White Man set is honestly not worth it for Resto Shamans. Heartflame Leggings and the T4 Helm and Karazhan keep up with it for Resto Shamans and will be incredibly easier to get. If you end up not wanting to go the tailoring route, your Priebus would be the same as Resto Druids, the Scintillating Headdress of Second Sight and Heroic Akanai Crypts, or the Watcher's Cow from Scenarian Expedition Revered will be your go-to choices for Helm. Hallowed Palders from Shadow Labs in the shoulder slot, Rainments of Nature's Breath from Heroic Ramps for the chest, Cord of Sanctification and Heroic Gold Hills Broad Foothills for the belt, and lastly, Pontifex Kilt from Heroic Steam Vaults for the legs. So that information was like taking a fire hydrant blast of water straight to the face. So what does it all mean? Is tailoring a good choice for you as a profession at TBC launch? Well, that's up for you to decide based on this information on how long you'll keep the crafted sets. If you still can't decide on your own, I'll give you my opinion here at the end, and I'd love to hear your guys' opinion on this as well in the comment section below. If you're one of the classes that can get similar gear to the sets in Phase 1 rating, I don't think it's worth it to be a tailor. I would just completely skip it. If your gear can last you into Phase 3 rating with Black Temple and Mount Hyjal, I think it would be very worthwhile profession to pick up and craft those sets. The hardest one to answer in my opinion is what if my gear gets replaced in Tier 5? 
From what I experienced in the beta raid testing, having maximum output in tier 4 content won't be a big deal at all. Karyazan was not that hard, which is not a bad thing, and didn't require characters to have an absolute min-maxed gear to clear. I mean, I played Resto Shaman for the beta testing, and full consumed, I had around the same amount of healing power as my Nax geared Holy Priest in Classic right now. Half of my gear wasn't even healing gear. It was the Tide Fury dungeon set that is geared toward Elemental Shamans. On top of that, we were able to down mag Theradon when his health pool was at 8.35 million before they nerfed him with all of these template characters. The real question you have to ask yourself is how high do I want my output to be progressing Serpent Shrine Cavern and Tempest Keep in Phase 2 before I replace my gear in those raids? That one I can't tell you. But what I can tell you is that if you just really don't want to go tailoring, you watch this video and you're like, this is too expensive, this is too much money, it's not for me, then don't do it. If you would rather just be an engineer or a jewel crafter or an enchanter or an alchemist, do that. Play the profession that is going to give you the most fun in the game. At the end of the day, the content will be able to be cleared regardless of what gear you're wearing. If you want to wear tier 4 into tier 5 rating, you wear that tier 4 in phase 2. Look the meta and all this information in this video dead in the eye and say no, I'm not a min-maxer and the time and money just isn't worth it for me. Like I said, I'll be a Shadow Priest and I personally will be crafting this gear. I'm a min-maxer and I want to make my character do the most damage possible. But if you just really don't want to be a tailor, I can tell you right now that you do not need to be a tailor. You'll still have just as much fun as everyone else and you'll down the content all the same. If you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful in your journey of seeking out which profession to choose or are just super hyped for TBC and this video helped you get even more hyped, hit that subscribe button. It helps my channel grow out a lot and allows me to get more of these videos out like this and I greatly appreciate it. I'm also live on Twitch every night of the week talking all things TBC and getting beyond excited to play this awesome game. That's it for me today though guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.